Hello and welcome to episode 66 of the Kicking Butt Podcast. Today I'm joined by Mika Miller. Mika Miller is a UK soul artist, vocalist, songwriter and producer from Manchester. She has just released her debut album, Heaven Knows, on the 10th of June. And that's why we're here today. Hello, Mika. Hello. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Yeah, I'm all right. It's been a, you know, a fairly long day so far. Yeah, for you, it's been a very long day, hasn't it? Yeah, multiple podcasts, you know, listening to people whitter in your ear all day. <laughs> really energises you, you know. Indeed. But I'm glad you're here. I'm glad, I'm, you're glad here. I'm here as well. It's nice to have you here. And I've been listening to your tracks recently and they are... Oh, thank orto you. Orto bene, allore, allore. Beautiful. And heaven knows... It's a fucking tune, may I say. Are you allowed to swear on this podcast? Oh, yeah, you can. Oh, great. Okay. Yeah, 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 let loose. I'm right at home now. <laughs> let loose. It's cool. But yeah, Heaven Knows is is such a, it's just a, a bit of an earworm. Do you know what I mean? I had it on the car like a couple of weeks ago and it's just been going round and round in my head. Oh, that's good. You've done a good job. Thank you. You've done what you were meant to do. Indeed. So, for the people at home that might not know who you are, mm-hmm. How would you describe yourself as an artist? Are there like particular artists that you think you've drawn influence from? Mm-hmm. Sound like? Well, yeah, definitely. I think you know it's probably evident that you know I love soul music. Mm. So you know the classics, and you know I like a lot of like um, female groups from the sixties and seventies. You know, I put a lot of backing vocal arrangements in my songs. Yeah. So I draw a lot of inf- influence from you know those kinds of artists, but. You know, I think Aretha Franklin as a vocalist is obviously up there for me. And Stevie Wonder, love Stevie Wonder. Um, in terms of like music production, probably like Quincy Jones or somebody mm. like that. And But yeah, you know, lo- this lo- I love, you know, 90s r and B. I'm, you know, born in 87, giving away my age. But, <laughs> you know, I'm big into 90s r and B. I'm big into, you know... Um, 60s and 70s, classic, soul music. Mm. Um so yeah, I take a lot of inspiration from a lot of you know a lot of those kind of genres, basically jazz, yeah. blues, gospel, anything of that nature. Let's say. Yeah, but you've you brought it into the in, obviously into the twenty first century, well, I hope, a modern twist. I hope that's true. It's fresh. That's you know? that was the intention. You know, that was the mm. approach. And you know, for this record, it, it was a really about kind of like mixing modern and more old school approaches yeah. in terms of the recording process and also the musicians that I chose for the record as well. It was like, you know, there's a lot of people who've played on, you know, some of those classic records, you know what I mean? Um, uh, Ricky Peterson, for example, that played on, on some of Prince's records and then mm. Bobby Sparks that played with Whitney Houston, uh, not Bob, with Bobby Sparks, sorry. <laughs> but <laughs> Terry Barnes, I've got so many names in my head. <laughs> Terry Barnes that played with Whitney Houston. And, you know, I brought a lot of musicians in from that kind of old sort of, that older school of yeah. musicians, but also worked with musicians who've done stuff with like Tom Mish, Cleo Soul, Michael Kiwanuka, Emily Sande, those kind of guys. Mm. So it was bringing, you know, those two different sort of schools of musicianship, I suppose, as well as production approaches together to try and like preserve what it is that's like amazing about like classic soul music. Yeah. Also hopefully make it sound modern. So I'm glad you think that I've achieved. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about the sort of like the, the that pulling together and creation of the album album then because obviously it's you produce it yourself Mm -hmm. you you're on your own label which is golden hour music yes so just take me like through how long has the process been (laughs) it's it's a a good question that i mean you know it's it's a lifetime the process isn't it ultimately you know so but no this album has i think when i first was like i'm gonna do an album it was 2018 and i just put out um the Defender, which I'd done, um, I'd produced in collaboration with Goldie. And I'd been working kind of like on, I'd been, I'd put out a couple of like, you know, piano vocal tracks, Mm. one of which is on the album as well. And done loads of shows and stuff. And it was like, you know, it's time to do an album. We're doing all these shows and, you know, everyone was coming to the merch stand and being like, where can I buy this? You know what I mean? It was kind of like, yeah, it felt like it was the right time to do it. So so it was 2018 and yeah, so, you know, what's that? Three, Three years, isn't it really? So it's been a pretty long journey with lots of ups and downs and trials and tribulations, you know, COVID being one of those things. Um, 
So yeah, it's it's been it's been a while. pretty hefty. You know what I mean? It takes time though. Big these project. things. Yeah, 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 absolutely. In hindsight, I think I sort of went into it quite um, naively in many ways, and I was right. like, you know, yeah, it's going to take like a year to do it. We'll get it all done in like one studio session. You know, the first studio session, which was like five days long, where I went in with some of the um, guys from Michael Kiwanuka's band and Emily Sande's band, and um, that was sort of in some ways it was it was sort of the intention for that to be the record, you know what I mean? Right. And it was just like cl- clearly going in and trying to do like seventeen songs in five days is like not going to happen. That's an absolute sweat. Yeah, sweat of a session. Yeah, it was a it was a lot. So yeah, when I came out of that, it was like okay, the work kind of starts here, if you know what I mean. Mm. And so it was like you know another sort of two and a half years in my studio. Um, obviously there was COVID as well. I yeah. had a spinal injury, as you know, so that sort of disrupted things quite significantly for, you know, six to nine months kind of vibes. And, and yeah, I couldn't get back in the studio. I had a, another studio session booked with a load of musicians actually from Michael Kiwanuka's live band who I'd seen at a festival and I was like, had worked with one guy from his band and then I saw them at a festival and I was like, these guys are just... Do you know what I mean? Top. Just on it. Yeah, yeah. So I'd rallied them all up and, you know, they were, we were ready to go in the studio. And then it was, I had a spinal injury a week before the studio session. And I was kind of like, I think I was, I was pretty adamant in hospital, like all on loads of drugs, like, yeah, I'm going to just go and still do it sort of thing. My dad's like looking at me like, I don't think you are going to go. And so eventually I just had to admit defeat on that one. So yeah, it's been, you know, long, um, different process than what I had intended it to be working with people remotely on zoom but it really did open up like loads of opportunities to work with some of the people that I've mentioned yeah who are in the US you know okay and yeah. it, because obviously if you're doing it remotely it doesn't need to be who's in the UK mm. it's who whoever Whatever. whoever you want yeah yeah, yeah yeah totally so it it was in some ways, I know COVID's been like really detrimental for a lot of people, but in some ways it was a little bit of a blessing in disguise, I suppose, because it, this album wouldn't sound as it sounds without a spinal injury and COVID in the middle. <laughs> you know? That's never been said on this show before. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's new. So, I mean, like, how fucked were you like, from the, from the spinal? Were you just I like, out, walk, you yeah. just out for the count? I mean, I crushed, entirely crushed one of my vertebrae. And how did you do it? I did it on a trampoline. I was in a trampolining class. I was doing it as like recreational. Oh, right. You know, I used to be quite sporty when I was younger. I don't do too much exercise. <laughs> I should do more exercise these days. <laughs> However, <laughs> um, I was doing dry January with a friend of mine and we were like, yeah, let's take up some, you know, more like exciting things or whatever. And yeah, it all went downhill from there really. So moral of the story. Don't go trampolining. Don't do dry January. <laughs> 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 multiple lessons but also there. don't do trampolining either um so yeah i had that injury and it was pretty you know it was, it was severe you know i was very yeah. nearly paralyzed from the waist down and right. since it you know i've i'm injured you know i've i've got metal work in my back i've got spinal cord damage damage to my nerves in my legs so there's a lot to manage still but yeah and but you know spinal injuries are mad so like i didn't really know this but there's like all these millions of different wires in your in your spinal cord, mm. right? They're not wires, but you know what I mean. Layman's terms. Yeah, yeah layman's terms. Yeah, 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 and yeah. so when you have an injury where your spinal cord gets compressed, basically any number of those wires can be damaged. Right. And so every single person who has a spinal injury, they'll have a completely different injury. Mm. So even somebody, I was reading like a report from someone the other day who's had exactly the same like in exactly the same place as my injury. Right. Paralyzed. You know, so it's yeah. it's like or everything that's from the waist down doesn't work without being too graphic. Mm. You know, so I was incredibly lucky, but yeah. obviously I'm still dealing with a you know, quite a difficult injury. Did it like affect your like obviously like your your core and your singing as well at I'd assume? Yeah. That's all part of that. I was in a know. brace for like nine months, so Obviously, when I came, I would, and I still not recorded all the vocals for the album, so I was a bit worried about that because it was like coming back into needing to sort of like finish the record mm. after the my injury, and 
yeah, like, you know, they, they did deteriorate. But actually singing is an amazingly powerful thing for healing, I think, in general. Mm. And I think particularly for, you know, when you're singing, particularly if you're singing like I'm singing, where you're putting all your body into it and yeah, whatever. Yeah. I think, you know, you. I think that's really helped me um, rejuvenate or regenerate a lot of the muscles in my back. Um, Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Now that sort of, those those months out, did it eventually feel like, a welcome break or were you sort of like itching to go because i know like obviously like a lot of us like self self-produced mm. artists yeah there's always this drive to just yeah. like what's the next thing keep going 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 kind of in the same way that covid was like a mm. a stop wasn't it yes did you eventually come round to like <laughs> something that was like okay i can't change it I, obviously, I had to slow things down quite significantly. I mean, yeah. to give you an indication of what my slowdown looks like, I was having a meeting with PRS in my kitchen. Right. Like four days after coming out of hospital sort of thing. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Right. So, like, I, I was trying to do that for a while. Mm. I was very adamant that, like, it wasn't going to sort of impact me mm. in that way. I was trying really hard to just carry on, I suppose. But I was really restricted, you know. I couldn't, yeah. I couldn't sit in a chair for any longer than half an hour. Couldn't walk for any longer than half an hour for, you know, a good, probably like four or five months or whatever. Right. So you constantly having to go. Okay, well, I've got to go and lie down now. <laughs> do you know what I mean? And so yeah, you can lie down and do stuff in bed or whatever. Eventually, I did succumb and decided to watch the entire um, Friends from start to finish oh wow yeah like a friend's marathon a friend's marathon I thought I need something that's going to cheer me up nothing yeah, too yeah. miserable <laughs> so I, watched, I watched all the friends from the very beginning but Amazing. yes so it's a mixture of both yeah sure. you came around to it eventually to some extent yeah, yeah. so like going into the studio you've got these amazing musicians mm. are the songs kind of pre like you know in terms of like when you're writing and stuff are they sort of pre structured out it's like this yeah. is what's going on yeah yeah i'm but a big you, planner you're quite like particular about how things need to be in a certain way i mean not necessarily in the creative space in terms of the studio but i suppose like obviously the songs are already written and they're mapped out in yeah. sort of like a, either a demo form or in a live arrangement that's been recorded as a example of what would i'm going to be doing with the session musicians sure and in that particular session the first session it was very free reign in many ways. You know, mm. I, I don't like to kind of... I think if, you, if you're if you a producer, you need to allow people who know their instrument really well, better than you do, yeah, to, yeah. like, be creative and explore things. Obviously, there's a sort of, like, you know, there's parameters for that and stylistic parameters or yeah. sort of the shape of the song. And it's about serving the song, isn't it? So, you know... I I create I suppose I create a, it created more of a free space for them and didn't really kind of give them loads of direction really apart from this is what it's going to be right and it's really sort of after the fact that so for example say heaven knows we talked about that so I had the sort of like demo of that laid out with vocals in it already which have been re-recorded later, but we use those as kind of like the bed for mm. them to play to so I can listen to what's going on and not be singing at the same time, okay, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so for that track, I asked them to play for something like 15 minutes without stopping. Ah, okay. So obviously okay. it's a, you know, it's a four chord sequence that's going round and round for 12 minutes. At some point, as a musician, you're going to kind of get a little bit bored of that and want to do something, but you've, you're restricted in the parameters of four chords. Sure. But as you get to that sort of like, you know, those great drum fills at the end of Heaven Knows, mm. they were like right at the end of that, you know what oh, I mean? They happened really towards the end of that thing. So it's finding those little magic moments. Then obviously, you know, it's, it took me about six months to piece together what, eventually became heaven knows because right. it was it wasn't recorded live like that from start to finish you know some of them were some of them were one take live nothing's for keeps was you know all the way through heaven knows was a bit more sculptured and shaped mm. so 
It's different approaches for different songs, I suppose. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Were, were you working with any other producers in, in terms of like having someone to like bounce back ideas off? Yeah, absolutely. And, and at the beginning, for sure, I worked with the, the guy who engineered um, ha, engineered that first session, Lewis Hopkins, who's he's actually a mastering engineer, but he's very, very particular about engineering. And so he was absolutely brilliant. And I think at that time when we first discussed stuff and we started sort of talking together, he took a real much more active role than an engineer normally would. Right. In terms of like guiding me and mentoring me around like Sonics and, you know, what it was that I wanted to achieve, what it was that I wanted the album to sound like. Um, and, you know, he was very involved in the early stages in terms of the kind of approach to how things were recorded. And that kind of set the groundwork for uh, okay. what came later in many ways. Sure. So, yes, it was an education, let's say that, mm. which was great. <laughs> what, uh, what studio did you record it in? We recorded in a studio in Devon called Middle Farm Studios, which is beautiful. It's like in the middle of the countryside. And it was a really hot, like, it was a hot week and it was just... It was really beautiful there and, like, there's loads of, like, flowers everywhere uh, and just, like, it's kind of like this barn conversion type place. Yeah, yeah. Very, yeah. very vibey. I love yeah. those sort of places. Yeah. I've been to a few little, like, recording retreats like that. Right. It's, it's, uh, like we went to a couple in, in Wales, it's like, no phone signal. Yeah. No nothing. So you, you're literally there to just do the thing and you just get soaked up into it. Totally. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Beautiful thing. It was great. Should we hear some of these songs? By all means. So Mika came in earlier on and she's done some strip back. Uh, are they all on the album, the tracks? They're all on the album. They're all on the album. Yeah. She's done some strip back versions of the tracks. Have a listen. Have a watch. See what you think. And we'll be back to talk about the tracks afterwards. See you in a sec. Hey, I'm Mika Miller and this is Girl. Girl, don't wish your life away. It's a do got nothing but today. Just know that you belong in the moments here to stay. Don't get lost in yesterday, tomorrow's just a day away. There with your head in your hands, come on darling, you've got the world in your sights. Now I know Darling, you got the love, got the love. 
This next song is called Flashlights and it's from my debut album Heaven Knows which is out on the 10th of June. Taking me to the light, taking me under All cars break over and undertake, racing with thunder When it feels like we could be free and like we're on the run mm. Shooting in real time, there's no need for flashlights I know just the part We can be postcards We can be letters Writing each other Like why won't get better We can be wise guys Show me a wild side mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We can be holy We can be kind We can be moved Stars, cause we are two, baby. Let's make it through. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We can be free like days in the river. Eyes mm, close, don't you hide the Shooting in real time There's no need for flashlights Taking me to the light Taking me under Oh, cars break over and undertake Racing with thunder When it feels like we're going nowhere But we just begun We postcards, we can be letters Writing each other like one will get better We can be wise guys, show me a wild side mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, we can be holy, we can be kind We can be movie stars Cause we are too Baby, let's make it through mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This next song is called Nothing's For Keeps Was it the world that you gave to me? Was it love or a lesson for me? When the table's turning and the fire keeps burning, would you come out? From underneath What was the last thing you said to me? Nothing's for keeps Just figured out what that meant to me When the table's turned Never mind the 
song and it's called Heaven Knows which is the title track for my debut album Heaven knows 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 Dreams fly high butterflies in the sky I'm alive Undo your victim and finally come and stay down to your with me. I'm in the light to the night unto your reckless heart. There's days, days are so long. I tell myself.
contemplate, don't you wait, armed in your feelings. Better days come and waste into your breathing. Hesitate, don't delay, remember your beating heart. And when the dreams escape, contemplate, undo your victim. Hello and welcome back to episode 66 of the Kicking Back Podcast. You've just heard a delightful live session from our guest today, Mika Miller. Oh, thank you. Sounded fucking delightful. Thank you very much. So, take me through the tracks and you played four songs. For yes. us. Let's go through each one and tell me, you know, how they came to be, what they're about, all that kind of thing. Okay, so, track one, track girl. One. Um, that was... I think the last track that I wrote for the album. Okay. And it was all finished. And I think, you know, when you're trying to make an album, you have to be quite, um, what's the word? Like, uh, dedicated to it, let's say. Mm. And I, you know, you get very caught up in, um, or I do, try, like writing new things. You know, like, you're like a hoarder with music, aren't you? You just make, create more music yeah, and never yeah. finish anything sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. So I was very like, don't get distracted and start writing new songs. But I felt like I had just had this, like, I really wanted to write this song. It just felt like it was missing from the from the record. Not that it came about like that with an intention, but as it came out, I was just like... That is what this record needs adding to it. Yeah. Um. So, you know, it, it's a it's drawn from real stories of women who inspired me, particularly 
Um, the two women who used to sing backing vocals for me, one of them is a racial activist called Angelie Sweeney, who has inspired me in so many ways. Mm. Um, and so the second verse, I actually refer to Angel, which obviously could be, you know, anyone, but I know <laughs> that it's, you know, it's about her, yeah. that's her nickname. Um, so... Yeah, it, it was really just about that. And, you know, those two women particularly were incredibly um, supportive of me over this whole journey. Mm. And, you know, we worked together for about five years. And it's very nice to have a, a record that sort of makes me kind of, well, pays homage to them in some ways because yeah. they're not doing backing vocals with me anymore. Both of them have got their own amazing journeys that they're on, you know, um, Busy, busy women, busy, powerful women, yeah. you know. Um, but yeah, it's lovely to have a song that's about them. So that's Girl. Nice. And I just put that out on International Women's Day, which felt very fitting. Of course. Of appropriate. Course. Um, and then, which song did we do next? We did Flashlights next, which almost didn't make it onto the record. Oh, really? Crazily. Interesting. Yeah. And, How come? And lots of people have picked up that, obviously, like, since the release and prior, when we sort of put it out to press, and, like, a lot of people are like, that's my favourite track. Oh, right. Actually, it was the favourite track of Brian Maloof, who mixed the record. He, I remember, he's done loads of big stuff, to to name drop a few people he he was one of the engineers on Michael Jackson's Bad album oh, amazing and he's just like he's mixed the whole record pretty much bar two tracks and he's just you know on it yeah, basically he knows his shit yeah. yeah he knows his shit and he loves the record so much but I think Flashlights is his his favourite tune um, and yeah that nearly didn't make it onto the record it was very close to being put in the bin because I was just like I can't quite get this to work. Right. After a lot of time shaping it. And then eventually I found out, I figured out what it was, fixed it. And then I was like, oh, this is actually one of my favourites now. So, What was the thing that wasn't quite working with it? It was a couple of things. What, well, it's very difficult to self-produce your own vocals, yes. right? And I do that with all the tracks. I've done that with all the tracks. And... Um, I think it was a tonal thing vocally, but also Ben, who actually played a keys today, I asked him to add a Rhodes to it, mm. which just gave it that gentler thing. And some of the drums were a little bit, um, a little bit forward. And so it was kind of creating a, it felt like it was just a bit pull, and, it was a bit of pull and push going on basically okay. in the yeah, in yeah. the performance of it. So yeah, there was a little bit of editing that happened, some additions of some extra instrumentation, including the roads, and me figuring out where the vocal sort of needed to sit. What like what is that process? Because obviously, if you're self-producing, mm. you probably hear these tracks. I don't know how many thousands times, thousands of times. Thousands of times. Yeah. So how do you keep it fresh? How do you like sort of come back to a track that you've heard a billion times? Be like, okay. How do you get yourself into a, that separate headspace? Well, I think you need a lot of motivation and dedication, but but you also need to love the, the music that yeah. you're making, don't you? And I suppose the thing that's interesting, having heard people's feedback, is like a lot of people keep saying to me, I feel like I hear new stuff in it each time mm. I listen to it. And I think that's partly to do with the process that I went through with them, which is that you know, they were developed over a long period of time. Mm. And I did keep going back to them and keep going, oh, okay, well, you know, I want this to do something here and kind of adding little bits of things in to, to make, to satisfy my own need until there was nothing else I wanted out of them, if you right. know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. Like, until it was like, that does everything it needs to do yeah. for me, you know. Um, so... I'm a bit of a perfectionist and so I get a lot of pleasure and joy out of tweaking things. Obviously, there are certain points where you get with songs and you just think, I cannot listen to that again. Yeah. But yeah. luckily, once you've gone... Uh, well, one, for me, once I'd gone through that process and I'd finished them all and they were mixed, actually now I go back to them and I can listen to them again with fresh ears, which is nice. It's interesting you say about, about the sort of listening and like hearing like new things every time because that's like... For me, that's like a a bar standard of like all of my favorite music mm -hmm. is it has that realistable quality to it mm. where that you are able to like pick these little extra things out. Mm. 
that you didn't necessarily notice the first yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, and I think it really it it adds a, like a depth and a quality to it that is obviously to like the bog standard listener. If they just hear it once, sure, they're not going to notice. But it's that person, whoever is like able to like dedicate themselves to that track, mm. get rewarded. Yes, these are a little extra. Yeah, sprinkles. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. Mm. Track three. Track three. So track three was. Nothing's for Keeps, which is probably the the oldest song on the record. So okay. I wrote that a long time ago and I wanted to include one song at least on the record that was from a partic- like a particular period of time. Mm. Because I'm such a perfectionist mm. and because it's taken me so long to do this album, um, there's loads of songs that have kind of like I've moved on from if you know what I mean like yeah. from my past and it's kind of like oh no one will ever get to hear them now because once t- you know if you don't put stuff out once you've moved on to this other space I suppose and you've improved to a point that the things that you have from the past are not really good enough to sit alongside everything yeah. else you know what I mean yeah. I'm not saying that they're all like that because there's a few but that one I just thought I, that shouldn't get left behind really it should mm. come it should come with me you know <laughs> um so yeah that that one i i think i probably wrote that when i was about 21 so it's like oh, right, okay. you know that old mm. if you can calculate when i said my date of birth earlier i'm not on. that good at maths no but you know it's over a decade ago you yeah, know yeah um and that was really special actually when we recorded that at middle farm in that first session and we did that in one take and it was one of the only tracks that kind of just came together like that mm. immediately yeah um they sort of the musicians sort of like ran through it and we had a little bit of a chat about it or whatever and then i you know i i was like i'll i'm gonna sing this in the room with the spill and all of that stuff and mm. you know you can't do that for every track because it's problematic when you're trying to create instrumentals and things sure, like that yeah. but for that one i just thought you know what let's just let that be and um yeah we went for a take and when we finished it everyone kind of looked around and it was like we're not doing that again that's done yeah. <laughs> i was like okay yeah you're right it yeah. just felt like it was right and I, I like the fact that there's you know a track on there particularly that one actually mm. you know that's just is what it is in it's the moment live. it's just bad. live yeah absolutely i love those moments recorded mm. it's just like yeah it's like that kind of like yeah, you know, the symbol dies down. It's the end of the chord, and everyone looks around. They're just sort of like, there's like the silent nod, like the. Yeah, we all know we got it. Yeah, yeah, like, totally. We finished it. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. That was, well, especially when you've got 17 songs to do as well. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Thank God for that. Right, yeah. move on next. What's the next fucking one? Come on. Uh, so, yeah. track four, the final song, track of course. Four is the title track. Heaven knows. Heaven knows. Yeah, which um, you know, as I said, it was that was a a long job and an interesting process to mould and shape into what it is. I feel it's probably like one of the more triumphant productions for me just because, it, you know, it took so long mm. and it was like there was lots of things in it that I was like, oh, it's not quite doing the thing I wanted to do at the point yeah. I wanted to do it. And then eventually when I finally had that structure and, you know, it was like, ah, I was like, that's, that's it. Fair. You know, so it's it's definitely one of my favourite tracks on the album. I think lyrically it, it sort of summarises the themes on the album, but also like the journey that I've been on making this album. Do yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. The difficulty of it and the peaks and troughs and those kind of like triumphant moments. And not just the journey I'm, I've been on making the album, but the journey that I feel like I'm probably still on with putting it out and doing live shows and all of that sort of yeah. stuff. So, you know... It, it takes a lot of faith to, I think, for me, or it took a lot of faith for me to, you know, um, take on something of this size, you know what I mean, in terms of making a record, putting a record out and all that stuff. So I suppose you have to have you have to have faith, don't you? And that's what that yeah. song is all about. <laughs> Amazing. In terms of like the, the the sort of the narrative structure of the album, mm-hmm. was there a lot of thought in terms of like track order, oh. like how you wanted the journey to feel? Definitely, it? it's a really complicated album it to because it's quite varied. You know, you listen yeah. to a lot of people's album and and it's like everything's quite similar in a way, and so it's kind of easier to create that shape. But 
there's a lot of variety. I know it's all in the same sort of sphere, but feel and mood wise mm. and tempo and, you know, it, there's the second half of the album is definitely, you know, like a, a bit slower and a bit more once you're in, I suppose. Mm. So yeah, there's lots of things to take into consideration when you when you're mapping it out. And I it took me ages and I I, f- I really struggled at first mm. and eventually it was like I'd bookended them with the wrong I'd bookended the album with the wrong songs, I think. Okay. And, that, and I was trying to create the middle, if you know what I mean. Yeah, and in yeah, the end yeah. I was like just don't do it like that. <laughs> take those ones off the edges <laughs> and, you know, start again with what goes first. Mm. And eventually that all kind of came together. But yeah, I kind of wanted it to be, you know, the things you will have heard single releases wise first and create that sort of familiarity and that more, yeah. um, I suppose, more of an upbeat start. And then for those people that are really kind of invested and interested in listening further, mm. that takes you more into a bit more of a self-reflective kind of place and... You know, that's the idea of it, I suppose. So we don't want our people at home to be shuffling the album then after all these <sighs> many painful hours of you know what? It. <laughs> however, people, however people want to listen to it. I think, you know, each their own. And the, you know, the thing with albums is there's always, and particularly with this album, it's interesting for me that, like, it's not like everyone's song, everyone's favourite song is the same song. Yeah, yeah. You know, so I'm sure there are other orders in which it could be. Mm you know could could be played in I, but yes it took me a long time so first time you listen to it definitely listen to it in the order it was intended yeah, and yeah. after that do what you like <laughs> I, I, I would like I had to hammer this home with like my missus because she's like terrible for like putting an album on the shuffle that I'm like at least just like the first few times you listen just listen to it in order sure. like um, Michael Kiwanuka I can't remember what, which album it is Kiwanuka maybe or yeah 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 that one there's like some really really beautiful moments where they like they run into there's a track in the middle that's got like harp and something and I'm, sure. I remember the first time I saw it I was just like oh like bawling my eyes out mm-hmm. but I was like that magic doesn't happen Unless, Unless you play it in that order, exactly. Mm. And I was like, just saying, it's like just just listen to it, and I'll, you know, because like someone spent a lot of mm. time thinking about that, and it, you know, it's the story, isn't it? So totally. it's a narrative story that you, you want to get through. Definitely, and even you know, like small things, like when I was mastering it, um, and I mastered it, a lot had an amazing day mastering at Abbey Road, which I've never been to before. Oh, nice. Mastered it there, and you know, I was working with Jeff on like the gaps between mm. each song how many milliseconds do you want between <laughs> that song and that song it's even that you know to that depth not just the order of the songs but like yeah what sort of breath do you want in between mm. this song and that song you know and that's super important as well isn't yeah, it yeah yeah you won't things. get that if you put it on shuffle exactly exactly <laughs> so you've got some live dates coming up indeed tell me about them well exciting i'm doing two album launch shows obviously they're a little bit later on um in the year mm. covid and whatever else roll-ups of lineups rollovers of lineups and all that sort yeah, of stuff yeah. but actually i feel like it's a really good time to do the album launch show so the albert hall album launch in manchester is the 20 oh god 25th? 25th thank you I just 25th. went out of my head there. <laughs> 25th of September and then before that is the Jazz Cafe in London on the 17th of September so both shows I'm really excited about obviously Albert Hall is like you know hometown big show and yeah, yeah. all the Manchester people and that you know anyone that's a musician in Manchester kind of I suppose you look at Albert Hall and you go like one day I'm going to play a that's show brilliant. there yeah, yeah. and obviously we shot the music video of Heaven Knows in Albert Hall and when we did that I was just like I can't do this album launch in Manchester anywhere else yeah. other than here. So, yeah, yeah. you know, it's a big leap of faith for me in terms of the size of it and, you know, the kind of level of it and stuff. And it's it's quite daunting, but I'm I'm really excited about it. And, you know, nice. It'll be good. Let's touch on videos quickly. Yes. So like you say, you've already done, there's three videos? Three right? videos. How involved are you creatively in this or were you kind of like very, video people <laughs> very like, yeah. I'm very involved I do all my own graphic design and all my own okay. like I'd edited you know directed Preacher Man and edited Preacher Man and I creatively directed Heaven Knows it was directed by Matthew Boone who's amazing he's helped me with like loads of videos mm. as have a huge number of people across Manchester who I can't thank enough for 
everything they put into these videos. We have had like, you know, we did six videos altogether. Three of them are out. Three of them are still to come. Okay. Um, and yeah, it's just, that was an amazing process. But yeah, I'm very involved in all the kind of like branding, creative. I love all that sort of stuff. Any kind yeah. of artistic expression is right up my street. So visual, I've got so much more into visual stuff as well since doing the music videos. So yeah. It kind of goes hand in hand, doesn't it? Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah. That's yeah. nice. Mm -hmm. So if people wanted to find these videos online or something, where would people find them? You can find them on my YouTube channel. Um, yeah. Under me, Camilla. Um, or I think some of them are on the website as well or clips on social media but yeah go go to YouTube that's where they are all stored cool and your social media things are what so on Twitter and Instagram I'm at Mika underscore Miller yeah as we said earlier on with an A not an E with an so a many people do people. do with an nice. A um and on Facebook I'm I think Facebook forward slash Mika Miller music cool yes cool that's me on the vinyls out Oh, the vinyl, of course. Yeah. Limited edition vinyl. Limited edition vinyl and um, CDs as well. And people can get that on the website? They can. They can get it on Bandcamp, yeah. Amazing. Yes. I might grab myself a copy. Double vinyl first. Double release. vinyl. Double vinyl. Beautiful. <laughs> Very nice. I do have one more question before we wrap this yes. up, Nika. If you could sum this podcast up in three words, yeah. what would it be? That's such a great question. Um, okay, so very chilled. Chilled is my first word. Chilled. Um, ooh, enjoyable. Is that a bit basic? Uh, you could, yeah. yeah. I've had a nice time. Yeah. And, um, mm, oh God, what's another good word? Chilled, enjoyable. Chilled, enjoyable. And this is so basic, isn't it? But anyway. I, nothing wrong with basic. <laughs> Everyone likes a basic bit. A basic? Know? No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> You said it. No, no, no. <laughs> no, that's not my last word. No, it's been very engaging. I think say that. Engaging. Engaging. Yeah. Chilled. Love enjoyable, it. En enjoyable. Enjoyable. Engaging. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. It was very nice. It's been lovely having you on today. Thank you. It's been lovely being here. And people at home, go and listen to this bloody album because it's fantastic. And this lady here is putting a lot of fucking work for it. So <laughs> let's let it pay off, shall we? Whilst you're out there on the internet. Check us out, Rec Rooms. We have different artists on every week, pushing out what's going on in the Manchester music scene. Check us out on Instagram under Rec Rooms. Facebook, we don't use Facebook, don't bother. We are on TikTok. Are you a TikToker? I am on TikTok, but I'm definitely not a TikToker. Yeah, I wouldn't really say we were TikTokers either, but we have a TikTok account, mm. so, you know, bump those numbers up for us. That'd be nice. Um, yeah, and check us out on YouTube, of course. This is where we're putting out the podcast every week and on all good podcasting apps. Thank you once again to Mika. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much for having me. And I hope you people at home have enjoyed this episode. We'll be back, blah, we'll be back again next week with another artist. We'll see you then. Thank you for listening. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast to catch up on new episodes every week. Also, check us out on our Facebook and Instagram at Rec Rooms, where you can find out about our other exciting music series. We also have this and all our other episodes of the podcast up on our Rec Rooms YouTube channel for your viewing pleasure. See you next time.